Hello, folks. Uh, please welcome with me George Huffnoggle. He is one of the creators of the app Pocket Audio Tools. George? Hello. Hey, hey, Carter. Thanks for having me. Yep. Ple pleasure to have you here with me. Talk I'm talking about your app. Um, oh, so, yeah, well, I mean, well, let's go ahead and just dive into it. I mean, what exactly does this do? Uh, well, Pocket Audio Tools uh, was born from a Twitter conversation, actually, between me and the co-creator, Christian Floyson. He's a composer and programmer out of Toronto, Canada. Um, essentially, I was looking for a tool, which we'll introduce here in just a minute, that does this very specific calculation. Um, and Christian replied when I tweeted about it that he could create one for me. So uh, the two of us just collaborated on that specific function, which turned into sort of a multifaceted tool set for audio, audio files, audio professionals, sound designers, composers, or just general um, audio affiliated folks. So, um, so essentially what it's doing here is serving as a tool belt, uh, more or less, for audio people. And there are right now four functions within the app that uh, we've introduced for the 1.0 version, which you have in front of us. We are deploying a new version here in the next week or so, but uh, for now we'll just kind of demonstrate what is in front of you. So, so yeah, yeah, let's check out this, uh, you know, the first function, which, which is Tempo. W what does this do here? Uh, yeah, well, so all these apps at the, uh, all the functions at the bottom have abbreviated titles because of space, but uh, this one is uh, Tempo Finder is the name of it. Uh, this is actually the first one that we created together from that Twitter conversation. Uh, what I was looking for, I was working on a trailer, and there was a sort of moving image that I, I, tr I noticed that it was recurring in the same speed. So I wanted to write music that was sort of mirroring that image, and I didn't know exactly what tempo that was. So uh, there's a math formula that you can do, and you'll see that the rest of these follow this pattern um, that you know you can do by hand, but it's time consuming. So, so, so yeah, yeah. If you want to, yeah, sure. Like so for instance, um, let's say we're working with a uh, a duration of time that is about 20 seconds long, and then within the that time we have 15 beats. And so uh, we basically return here. And so we want to know, well, what's the exact tempo for those two inputs? Uh, we just do a quick calculation, and we see here that it's 45 beats per minute. Now, that's a pretty uh, plain tempo. And some people, they you know suggested when I asked about this, well, you can use something called a tap to tempo, which is where you simply just tap on the screen, and then it times within a 60 seconds how many times you do that, and it will display a tempo. It's not quite accurate, though. You can see that at uh, past the decimal point, it goes up to ten thousandths of a second. So over a long period of time, um, if it's not accurate, and you know, if it was say uh, fifty seconds, that would get off pretty easily. It, it would phase out in time, and I'd you know get frustrated and start over again. So uh, this is kind of just a more accurate tool. And then you know, you have to imagine if there are like a few tweaky knob kinds of things here. The beat value below the number of beats within duration essentially is a multiplier that you can select here and let's say instead of a quarter note we wanted a dotted quarter which is one and a half times uh, basically you can see that the time increases one and a half amount there so that's kind of how that started here uh, that's the tempo finder and in each of the um, other functions sort of is visualized in the same manner like a calculator so we had the header up top which displays the output and then the inputs below uh, a couple other cool features here um, Another one is the Sempty time code calculator, which is a very nerdy one, <laughs> thing to say, but it's similar to the Tempo Finder. Um, Sempty uh, stands for the Society of Motion, Motion Picture and Television Engineers, which is sort of a standard format of information that you see here in the middle. So yeah, yeah, it, look, it looks like this is probably something for video. You mentioned like frames and twenty nine point nine seven FPS. Exactly. Yeah, you got it right. Uh, so on the left here, you have hours, then it's minutes, seconds, and then the frames on the right. So uh, we actually were requested to make this as part of the features. We sort of crowdsourced some ideas, and one of them was to create a empty time code calculator. And uh, so the standard here you'll see is twenty nine point nine seven frames a second. Uh, there are other values from here to choose. Now, these are all sort of standard, some not so much, but um, there you'll see drop frame here uh, as well as 30 drop frame. That's actually a slightly different kind of calculation that was born from a long time ago, but let's just use the standard here and use 29.97. Um, again, this is just a sort of simple uh, operator, either adding or subtracting, but the trick here is the... I'm 
amount of information you can put in. Uh, so here we have an error value, and this is going to be a common thing. We've already fixed this for the next update, but basically the output here is saying that we have too many frames because we only go up to 29.97. <laughs> so we need to change that. We can just change that to 12. That's easy enough. And then let's add the same amount here. So here we have 12 seconds and 12 frames plus 12 seconds and 12 frames. Voila, 24 seconds and 24 frames. Um, the one thing that's different here between that and the tempo finder is the plus sign in the upper right here and the favorites button. Now here you can actually um, save the time. So for instance, uh, you'll get a new cut of film or whatever you're working on and you need to change it. So you do your addition and let's say you get again, they remove the same amount, you will have already saved that calculation because it okay. can be time consuming. So we just save here and we'll hit the plus button. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Uh, let's call it Carter is hilarious. Or Hycarious. I am Hycarious. It's uh, like a haiku. But, yes. you know, according to... A, so, a funny, I'm a funny haiku. Uh, you are. You're very funny. So we'll just save you, and there should be a little noise here. Just to confirm that you saved it to there. And then if you go to your favorites, Carter's Hycarious right here. So uh, another thing that we've added for the next update is that uh, we have... You can't currently um, edit the title if you screwed it up like I did here. <laughs> so we've added a new feature. You just tap the cell and uh, when you go into edit mode here. And it'll allow you to edit what's there. Uh, easily deletable too. You just tap there and it's gone. I'm no longer Hycarious. You are. But in my heart you are. So, <laughs> so again, this is another... Something by doing it longhand takes a lot of time and when you're working under a very strict deadline uh, like this one film course we spoke to he would really benefit from using that kind of thing so yeah, yeah so, so all, all these features are things that in working and, and talking with with people that, that work in sound and film that you've designed this for them that is correct yeah and we took time with our beta testing to send out to people who you know specifically requested certain things or may not have thought of uh, using these kinds of functions and so this is sort of built around their feedback um, because you know when you're starting with user design stuff it can get complicated at first and then you have to think well what's the easiest way to represent this information and we're going to continue to kind of reformat and, and uh, review what's here so that we can continue to make this easier for people to use and you know broaden the base of people that might have access to it so uh, kind of moving along to the right side here, uh, this is called a metric modulation calculator. Uh, it's kind of complicated language, but essentially, uh, let's say you're in a tempo and you are doing something uh, where you're using an odd group of notes within a given amount of time, um, and you want to take those notes and make them not odd in a new tempo. It's kind of a weird way to explain it, but uh, essentially, this is another calculator that does this. So. Like the tempo finder, you can plug in, we're going to kind of go the opposite route here. We're going to plug in a tempo of 100 beats per minute. That's where we currently are. And we'll use, uh, let's do quarter notes here. And you'll see that there's a, sort of a one-to-one -one relationship is the standard. That just means that for every quarter note, it equals one quarter note. However, if we want to change that, we can do three to one here and it automatically formats that. And let's say in the new tempo, we want to move to a one-to-one -one relationship, essentially, we're going to calculate here. Same thing here. It's the same tempo, but let's let's make it a little more complicated. Let's say it's four to five, and then again it'll just change it up there. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I you know this is another one that's mostly geared towards composers, uh, composers who might work in film and might do shifts in time essentially uh, that let you kind of do it in a slick way. You have to kind of know what the math is behind it. And this, again, this is another way to do this. I'm a person who uh, does not like doing calculations longhand when I don't need to. So this is kind of a handy guide for that. And I have one person who I know who's very excited about. His name's Jake Romick. So I'm going to give a shout out to Jake Romick for being excited about this feature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can use it and he can use it. We can all, the both of us can use it. So at least we have two solid users there. Yes. Um, so... Kind of just want to take a pause here. I want to just also cite Christian, uh, who was the co-creator. He did all the programming for this, and so uh, special thanks to him for you know learning. This is his first iPhone app he's ever done, oh, so wow. he's had to learn from scratch. Uh, he knows C plus plus, so that he did an Objective C, and it worked out really well for us. Um, so he did a great job. I learned a lot as well. You know, we hired a graphic designer to help us do some of this icon work um, and the color schemes and things, and so it's been a it's been a lot of fun. So. Okay, so the last feature, which is my favorite, uh, is called the Scale Frequency Display. Um, now, 
there are two basic things that you can do with this. If you uh, are just sort of discovering it, it's a good reference. So you see on the left here, there's something called MIDI, and then pitch, and then frequency hertz uh, at the top. Now this is kind of a common standard representation of different ways of understanding uh, audio. So on the left, there's 0 through 127, which are all the MIDI numbers associated. Uh, the middle here is the pitch. Um, so I, if you were looking at, a, say, a piano or a, a keyboard, um, these are the pitches you would know the keys as, uh, B, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A. Um, and then the numbers associated that are where they lie on the keyboard. So C4 is in the middle of the keyboard. Anything below that is 3, and then 2, and 1. Um, and then on the right here is frequency. So every pitch on the keyboard has a specific frequency. And so if you're a sound designer, and I am mostly interested in sound design, and you work with something called a tone generator, which is basically a way to produce frequencies, um, introduce frequencies into something, uh, you might not know exactly what the frequency uh, is as a note name. So I know that I want to use um, G4, and I'm in the scale, or key of G, and I want to use add in G4 as part of making the sound interesting. Um, so I have to know what the frequency is. So what I can do is uh, I can just scroll up here. Every note is available. Okay, whoa, that's a lot of notes. Until <laughs> I find G4, and there it is. We can see it's 391.9954. So we, what we wanted to do essentially is a very, a very accurate representation of hertz. But let's say you don't want all this information displayed. We have um, a sort of filter here. So we can go into the mode, and we can select what scale we're in. Uh, let's say we're in F, we'll go, uh, let's have fun here, we'll just do natural minor. So F, and we want to know what um, G sharp, which is A flat and F minor, is, and we want G4, so we go to G4, and it's 4153047. So essentially it's just a way to filter out what's in front of you. Um, the cool feature here is if you want to just uh, use as a reference, you can hold down the pitch here and it will play the pitch itself. Uh, we can even go up, hold it down there. Different ways to do this. So you can kind of just go right down the, the app there. So yeah, the, the actual sound part of the sound. Yeah, uh, it's a tone generator essentially <laughs> within the app itself. So it's very basic. It just plays a, a sine wave, which is a very clean tone, like if you're whistling. Um, and then if you are just a, a casual audio person or even a, you know, a high carious carter, uh, you want to find out what, you know, what all these do exactly. We include a little helpful guide here, which is a PDF file. Uh, you can zoom in and read a little bit more about it here. Uh, so each one is described with this associated icon, what the inputs are for, any additional information you might need to know for the app. And then, um, a few other things that kind of just help you guide uh, to what the inputs do versus what you'll get back out. So, um, yeah, so essentially the audience, you know, for this are audio professionals. And uh, we're at currently just developing new features each month. Uh, we plan on focusing on this for about a year, supporting it. It's $1.99 right now, which entitles you to all future updates. We don't plan any in-app purchases currently. Um, so the, you know, every feature that's added a change to, if you buy it, you'll have access to it as long as that, you know, we can keep it alive. So, uh, that's kind of where we stand right now. Okay. Very cool. And it, yeah, like I said, this is a, this, this is an app that, that can really help out music professionals. And as a music and sound professional yourself, you know, this is something that you can use yourself. That's correct. And I have, uh, already used it. I, um, you know, the tempo finder is the first thing that I needed and it, I paid off really well. Uh, this empty time code, I, you know, I could see myself using that more if I'm working with more linear media and film. Yeah. Um, now, now, I'm curious about with the, the empty button there. What, what exactly is going to tap oh, yeah. on it here and what does like this do? Yeah. Oh, you just set it to frames. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, want just frames or you only know frames, you prefer, mm -hmm. it will convert that information as well. So we'll go to the input screen here and clear that out. Let's say we have 450 frames and then uh, we want uh, 650 frames, we can add that in. And then it'll display at the top there, uh, 1,100 frames total, but also in this empty time code what that means as well. Okay. So it's kind of a nice little conversion. And then there are other conversions what, you know, we can add in the future, like milliseconds and, and further uh, down the decimal point line that we can help out other people. And I have my former composition 
professor email me who played this and said, George, why did you add these features in already? So I've already been scolded by a former teacher. <laughs> uh, but it worked out really well. He's, he, he you know, uh, has helped us out already with thinking about some other features. So And we do welcome feedback. That's exactly kind of why we created this is introduce some basic features and hope to, you know, kind of engage the community in a way that's helpful for everybody. Yeah, and, of course, in the help section, you have the feedback button. That's Yes, exactly. So if you wanted to uh, email Christian here, let's boot that up a little further. So there's Christian right there. Everybody, there's his email. If you want to lambast him with any kind of commentary, please be polite. He is Canadian, so he'll he'll be very nice in responding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you fill in the subject line here from you, and then, uh, you know, if you have your sent from my iPhone or whatever, your key out will automatically fill in. So it attaches directly to your email. It's a pretty convenient way to access uh Christian, not me, of course. <laughs> I, I can't be bothered with the crowd. No. Um, no. Yeah. So we, if you don't want to say anything, should we say, yeah, let's, let's send Christian a message. Hi, Christian. Oh, let's see. Hobo Christian. Uh, Hi. We call him uh, C-Flow. Let's say hi, C-Flow. He'll be curious to know why it's, my name is on your email, but we're going to send it out anyway. And it, All right. He'll get it once. Well, he'll get it once I'm back on Wi-Fi. That's correct. So it'll be waiting in your outbox. Yes. But yeah, that's essentially the core audio tools there. All right, very, very cool, George. Uh, thanks so much for your time to to show us around th this app. You know, it seems like it's uh, you know, really helpful for you know for for that specific audience that you, that you made it for. Yeah, it's a utility app, and you know, uh, we do plan. Uh, it's only out for iPhone natively. Uh, you can use an iPad as an emulator, but uh, we plan to format it properly for iPad in the next month and then roll out to Mac computers and then PC and then hopefully Android if we can get our hands on the 100 devices we need to <laughs> format it. So <laughs> Yes, good, good luck with the testing. Yeah, once it's on desktop, it's no more long, longer pocket audio, but uh, <laughs> we'll call it desktop audio tools. Yes. So. <laughs> George, George, thanks again. Yeah.